praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your kindness, Lord. We thank you for being God. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the visitation. We thank you for the impact of your spirit upon our lives. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, we glorify you. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you because your word is true. You are worthy to be praised. You are our redeemer. You are our helper. You are the Lamb of God. You are the King of kings. You are El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Nusi. You are the Lamb of God. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we glorify you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we praise your holy name. Thank you, Father. For the three on this section two. And our lives will never remain the same. Amen. Glory be to God. You are welcome to the day three of the prayer and fasting and word. And the word of the Lord came to me for you. He said, greater days are ahead of you. Greater things are ahead of you. Greater things are ahead of you. Whenever God wants to reposition your life, he gives you an instruction. Whenever God wants to reposition your life, he gives you an instruction. And whatever you do with the instruction will determine the outcome of your life. Whenever God wants to reposition your life, he gives you an instruction. Every instruction from God has a potential to transform your future. Every instruction from God has a potential to transform your future. So whenever God wants to move you to the next level, he gives you a prophetic word. What is a prophetic word? It is a word with an ability to inspire. It is a word with an ability to direct. It is a word with an ability to protect. So when God wants to move you to your next level, he gives you a prophetic instruction. And the word of the Lord came to me and said, tell my people, greater things are ahead of you, ahead of them. So this is the time to believe the Lord for the extraordinary. You see, your faith works better when you have the knowledge of the will of God for your life. I said your faith works better when you have the knowledge of the will of God for your life. Your faith works better when you have the knowledge of the will of God for your life. This is how your faith works. Because having the knowledge of God's will brings an inspiration for continuity. I said, having the knowledge of God's will brings an inspiration for continuity. It brings an inspiration for continuity. So if, if you're truly going to excel, if you're truly going to make a difference, you need the knowledge of his will revealed to your spirit. The best way to live your life is to live it in the context of God's will. The best way to live your life in, in Genesis. I got to show you this in Genesis chapter 12. Greater things are ahead of you. It doesn't matter what is happening to your finances, to your job, to your relationship. Your best of days are ahead of you. In the midst of the drought, we can see opportunity. We can see blessings. We can see open doors. Now, in Genesis chapter 12, Genesis 12, I'm going to read from this one. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, he said, get thee out of your country. He said, get thee out of your country. A prophetic word breaks limitation. A prophetic word is an empowerment to see things from God's dimension. A prophetic word is an empowerment to see things from God's dimension. And if you can see from God's dimension, no opposition can resist the manifestation of your destiny. If you can see from God's dimension. Now, the prophetic word came to Abraham, from to Abraham here, before he became Abraham, he said, 
Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's land to in from thy father's house to unto a land I will show you. There is a land ahead of Abraham. The same is for you watching me right now. There is a land ahead of you. There is a greatness ahead of you. There is a future ahead of you. There is success ahead of you. So but what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Can I get God's word? If I can hear from God, that is the end of the confusion. If I can hear from God, that is the end of the confusion. There is a confusion because there is a lack of divine direction. Greater things are ahead of you and greater days are ahead of you. Stop looking at your past and start focusing on your future. Stop looking at your past, your past mistakes, your past betrayal. Stop looking at your past. There is no future in your past. But you can maximize your present to create a future. Stop looking at your past. There is a great danger in looking behind. There is a great danger in looking behind. Your future is ahead of you. Your future is not behind you. Your future is ahead of you. Your future is not behind you. And God is calling you to a great life, to a great destiny. This is the reason why you can't get distracted right now. Refuse to allow your past mistakes to control your passion to rise to your next level. Mistakes are real to humanity. Mistakes are real to people. Everyone has made a mistake. Everyone have lost something one way or the other. But great people are those who look beyond their past to see their future. The more you think about your past, you are really meeting the possibility of your greatness. The more you look at your past, there is no strength in your past. But there is a strength in your present. So when the word came to Abraham here, the word was focusing him on the future. You see, whenever you get a revelation from God, it is a proof that something new is about to happen. <laughs> Whenever you get a revelation from God, it is a proof that something new is about to happen. And those who win with God will always respond in God's direction. Looking behind won't give you the solution. Looking into the past will strengthen your future. You know what happened? Those who make great things to happen and people who focus on the will of God and make it a priority, make it a priority for their lifestyle. They focus on God's will. So the one the Lord came to Abraham here and said, There is a land I want to show you. There is a business ahead. There is a better relationship. You shouldn't allow betrayers to frustrate your future. You shouldn't allow betrayals. It doesn't matter the mistakes you made in the past. Don't build on that. Build on strengths. Build on strengths. Discover your strengths. Don't focus on your weakness. Don't keep relationship with people who focus more on your weakness. Don't keep relationship with people who always want to take advantage of your weakness to place limits on your possibilities. Don't. Keep relationship with people who can challenge you to grow. Keep relationship with people that can help you do great things, but don't keep relationship with people who, whenever they come into your life, all they do is to pick all your mistakes. All they do is to talk about your mistakes. All they do is to see your mistakes. People like that brings a negative energy and they deplete energy. They will always pull away strength from you. Such relationship are toxic to destiny. You don't do that. You don't do that. I want to keep happy people around me. I have a, uh, all the people I want to keep in my circle of great relationships should be happy people. I don't want people always, they're angry, they're frustrated, they're, they, you know, they, you get to be happy. You see, when people are frustration, doesn't solve your problems. Being frustrated, being bitter, being depressed doesn't solve any problem. It can only create emotional crisis that can lead to uh, uh, health issues. There are those having health crisis today because their inability to manage their emotion. 
the inability to manage your emotion. Stop looking behind. There is a future ahead of you. There is a destiny ahead of you. There is a greatness ahead of you. This is not a time to give up. This is not a time to say I can't go forward anymore. You have come this far to win. You have come this far to break forth. You have come this far to take the lead. If the marriage fail, don't quit on your life. That the marriage fail apart doesn't mean the end of your life. Pick up the broken pieces and put it back together and begin to look into the future. The bones were dry in Ezekiel 37. There was still a future for those bones. They were dry, hopeless, helpless, and scattered. But the prophetic word came from the Lord and asked Ezekiel, Can these bones live? When that word came, it came with inspiration, it came with revelation, it came with direction. And when that word came to Ezekiel, Ezekiel the prophet, he looked at the situation and he said, God, thou knowest. He said, You know. And he said to Ezekiel, Prophesy. Can I say this to you? When things are broken, begin to speak to them. When things are broken, when you look at your life, it's not moving in the direction of your expectation, you can speak to your situation. Come on. When you look at your life, it's not moving in the direction of your passion for greatness, you can begin to speak to your situation. Your future is greater than any obstacle. Your future is greater than any obstacle. Your future is greater than any storm. So we got to begin to see our life from the dimension of God's will. Can I say this to you? Your best of days are ahead of you, not behind you. Your best of days are about to come. Can I say this to you? You gotta be positive about your future. You gotta be positive. Let me say this to you. There is something about being positive, I'm telling you. There is something about when you're positive, your energy level is high. And these are people who can conquer situations. It doesn't matter what they face financially, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. But once you are positive, your energy level begins to rise. And those who are positive will always recover what they have lost in life. You see, there is an attitude of faith. And this attitude is being positive, irrespective of the trauma, the limitation, the challenges, the, the, the backwardness, whatever that is going forward. In your life that is not consistent with God's will, we can choose to be positive in the midst of troubles. We can choose to be positive in the midst of hardship, in the midst of famine. And the word of the Lord is coming to you right now. Look forward. When God told Lot and his family to leave the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, the instruction he gave to them is, don't look behind. Don't look behind. Stop looking behind. And when that word came, that was the prophetic direction. But the, the wife of Lord couldn't go forward because emotionally she was trapped with Sodom. Be careful that you don't get married to your past. Listen to this statement again. I said, be careful that you don't get married to your past. Be careful. That you don't get married to your partners because if you do, it will be difficult to negotiate for the future. If you do, because everyone got a pass. But great people are those who look beyond it and say I have a future. In respect of the mistake, the divorce, the breakdown, the financial losses, the humiliation, you must be willing to forgive and live a better life. You must be willing to walk away from a past that has no inspiration. You must be willing to walk away from a past that can strengthen your dreams. Can I say this to you? Once you have passed the age of 20 years, you don't have time anymore. So stop trying to waste your life, trying to win people into your life that are not part of your life. Stop trying to win people over that don't believe in your dream. Stop waiting for accolades, appreciation from people who don't believe in your destiny. Stop looking for people to give you approval. Stop waiting for that. You don't need that right now. You don't have time. All you need right now is to hear from the Holy Ghost to know the direction is taking you to. Stop waiting for approval. Stop waiting for people to come and hug you and embrace you. Embrace yourself. Hug yourself. Talk to yourself. Learn to see yourself in the direction of God's will. This is what to do right now. You don't have the time for pity party. There is no time for pity party. No time. You got to make up your mind to rise beyond this limitation. You got to make up your mind. Those who do outstanding things are people who look beyond their emotional limitation and focus on their energy. 
They look beyond their emotional situation and they begin to focus on their future. Let me say this to you. Those who rise to the top are people who choose not to remain at the floor. Those who rise to the top are people who choose not to remain at the floor. Those who rise to the top are people who choose not to remain at the floor. They have the same opportunity with those who are at the floor, but they choose to rise beyond the limitation. And how do you do that? You do it by believing in the prophetic word. You do it by taking this word to heart. My better days are ahead of me. Great days are ahead of me. My future is bright. There is a greatness in me. You must learn to talk to yourself. I was talking to a dear preacher today that called me from the UK and he was telling me, Apostle, thank you for encouraging me. You have stood with me, Apostle. You have encouraged me. You have inspired me. And I tell, I said this to him. I said, listen, if I don't encourage you, if I don't inspire you, I am not fulfilling my destiny. Because the Bible said he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and pastors. And for the equipping of the saints, for the perfecting of the saints, so my job is to perfect you, is to equip you, is to release you into your destiny. So when you meet me the next time, you tell me, Apostle, I have an inspiration for continuity because I listen to you. This is my calling. My calling is to see you rise beyond limitation. My calling is to see you rise beyond opposition. My calling is to push you into your own destiny. This is what I'm called to do. This is why you see me on the scope. This is why you see me. Can I say this to you? There is a greatness in you. Don't allow anyone to talk you down. You may not have the skill. Skill is acquired. Gift is given. I say skill is acquired. Gift is skill. Is acquired. Gift is given. You may have this, the gifts. But if you have the gift, you need to get the skills to polish the gifts. Because what skill does to people is that when you're skillful at what you do, you become a wonder to your generation. When you're skillful at what you do, you become a wonder to your generation. So gifting is free. Gifting is free. But skill is acquired, and skill is acquired over a period of time. It goes through process. I was sharing with a fellow today, I said, those who run from process can experience progress. Those who run from process cannot experience progress. I've been in ministry for 20 years now. There were certain things the Lord showed me many years ago in my ministry. They are just happening a few months back. A few months back. The Lord showed me what he was going to do. Let me say this to you. When God gives you a word, stop judging your future by your limitations. When God gives you a word, stop judging your future by your limitations. Stop looking at what you don't have, what you can't do. Look at what you can do and focus on what you can do because what you can do has the potential to make all the difference. And God is calling us to take the lead. He's calling us to take the lead. He's calling us to make a difference. Can I say this to you? There is more to you than what you know about you. There is the you undiscovered. Wow, Ooh, that's heavy. There is the you undiscovered. There is the you you have not noticed. There is the you that many have not discovered, even you. You know the scripture said in Proverbs 25 verse 2. In Proverbs 25 verse 2, it says, The glory of the Lord to conceal a thing is the horn of the kings to such a matter. It is the glory of the Lord to conceal a thing, but the horn of the king is to such a matter. The glory of the Lord to conceal things. There is an aspect of you hidden from you that you need to get an inspiration from the Spirit to tap into or to discover. There is an aspect of you. You are more than what you're saying. You are more than how you look. You are more than what you dress. You are more than how you look in your community. So I want to say this to you. There is more to you. There is more to your ministry. There is more to your calling. There is more to your destiny. There is more to your assignment. There is more to your gifting. There is more to your purpose. There is more to your personality. There is more to your dream. There is more to your potential. There is more to your articulation. There is more to your anointing. There is more. You got more. You got more. 
don't talk yourself down even when you don't see success even when you're making all the effort but you don't get the required results don't talk down on yourself talking down on yourself depletes your energy and creates an atmosphere of limitation and frustration and deception you don't do that to yourself look at what jesus did to himself jesus said the spirit of the lord god is upon me in Luke chapter 4 in Luke chapter 4, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because I've anointed me to preach the gospel, to heal the broken heart. And Jesus never said, I'm nobody. He knew how to build his self esteem. He knew how to build his confidence. He knew how to present himself in the public. He knew what it means to command and lay hold of the atmosphere. He took charge. Come on. You are more than what you think you are. I don't care who kicked you out. You can kick yourself in. I don't care what they said about you. You can rise beyond it. I don't care who placed a limitation on your future. You can break the limitation. Can I say this to you? In Second Kings to the 7, if you read from verse 1 to 3, from verse 1 to 2, there was a prophetic word that was spoken by Elisha the prophet. He said, by this time tomorrow, there's going to be so much in the gate of Samaria. Now, when the prophetic word came, now the king and the man that was with the king, the man doubted the word they, they were talking, and they doubted the potential of the prophetic word that was spoken. And whenever God gives a prophetic word, our responsibility is to ensure that that word is in the direction of God's will. No one could truly rise into great dream, into great possibility, if they don't walk in the light of God's word. No one could truly rise. So what God is calling us to do is to function in the direction of his will. This is the only way we can excel. This is the only way we can win. And this is the only way we can be who God wants us to be. There is something God wants us to be. There is something God wants us to have. There are places God wants us to go. And there are things God wants us to see. You can't truly rise in your dream when you're ignorant of your purpose. You can't truly rise in your dream. You can't really rise. So Jesus knew how to talk to himself. Jesus knew how to speak to himself. Jesus knew what to say concerning his destiny. Wake up and speak to yourself. Have a conference with yourself. You sit on your sitting room, maybe you take a coffee or a glass of water like this, and you begin to talk to yourself. I am great. Maybe your name is Rosa. You say Rosa is great. Rosa is blessed. Rosa is anointed. Rosa is going great places. You're talking to yourself. You're talking to yourself. Maybe your name is Angela or Shamin, and you're talking to yourself. You begin to talk to yourself. Behave like Jesus for the first time. Behave like Jesus. And Jesus knew how to talk to himself. He said, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he anointed me. He knew what to, how to address himself. Can I say this to you? Your perspective comes from what you believe. And your perspective determines how you see things. Your perspective. I live in Africa. I live in Africa. But when God called me to do ministry, he told me your ministry is gonna go all over the world. He told me that many years ago. He said, I want you to get ready to talk to any kind of personality around this world. I am sending you as an apostle to the nations. When God said that to me, I knew I have a responsibility to develop my capacity. You see, capacity building is the pathway to releasing greatness. Capacity building is the pathway to releasing your greatness. You can't truly release your greatness until you understand what it means to build your capacity. Let me say this to you. You are eternal in treasures. <laughs> wow. I said, you are eternal in treasures. You know, the Bible said, we have these treasures in the acting vessel. There are treasures within you, undiscovered, on top. There are treasures within you. There are things you're carrying that most people don't have an idea of. There are things you're carrying. You are full of possibility. You're full of the anointing. But most times, most of us can't think in the direction of our purpose. Can I say this to you? There is greatness in you. I came to remind you, your best of days are ahead of you. Greater things are in you. You have been anointed, sent by heaven to answer the questions of humanity. You have been anointed to take the lead in this generation. You are anointed to break the limitation and to have a generational influence on this generation. You can have what is called generational influence.
there is generational influence because what the church know about is about generational causes. That is what most people know about. But most people haven't heard about generational influence, generational inspiration, generational wisdom. There is generational influence, generational strength. Let this strength go from generation to generation. How do you have a generational influence? It's when your lifestyle is lived in a such a way that it becomes an inspiration to generations unborn. When your lifestyle becomes an inspiration to generations unborn, there are a lot of generations that are going to come. And they read about you. They read about your speech. They read about the things you share. Do you know you have been called to take the lead? Do you know there is more to you than where you were born? I don't care the circumstances that surround your birth, your more than that. None of us choose our destination in birth, but we can choose our destination in destiny. Hmm. I said none of us choose our destiny in birth, but we can choose our destination in destiny. We can choose our destination. Oh my God. Baby, you can choose your destination. Brother, you can choose your destination. You can decide what life is going to be for you. I didn't choose where I was born. I was born into a family in Africa, Port Harcourt, in Nigeria, <laughs> Abia State. <laughs> I was born into a family of a man and a woman. And what God gave back to me there, but he positioned me for a global assignment from where I was. So my culture doesn't affect my thinking. The environmental factors doesn't affect my way of viewing things. So I think from the perspective of the eternal father. You see, you got to get to a point in your life where you think from the perspective of the eternal father. There is the perspective of the eternal father. And you begin to see your life from the dimension of God's will. You don't see your life from where you come from or from the limitation. Maybe you came from a family where there was curses, oppression, frustration, deception. No, no. You shouldn't be that. Not you. you drop that. That is not you. His Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Second Corinthians 5.17. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He said, All things have passed away, and all things become new. If you are in Christ, you are calling to the God life. If you are in Christ, you are called to manifest the true kingdom identity. Can I say this to you? Reject everything that despises your future. Come on. You heard me? I said, reject everything that despises your future and celebrate everything that inspires your greatness. Reject everything that despises your future and celebrate everything that inspires your greatness. This is how to think from this day forward. Now, I'm talking to you right now because you're a very influential person. You are very influential. If you're listening to me, this is for influential people. God sent me to raise influential people, people that will make a difference on the globe. It's my mission that when people meet with me, their lives will shift to the next dimension. It's an assignment from heaven. Now listen to me. You are carrying something that most people don't have a clue about. And this is the time to begin to function in the dimension of the will of the Father. You know, when we read about the prophecy that Elisha gave in 2 Kings 7, the lepers were ignorant of that prophetic word. But the lepers stepped into it by divine arrangement. Can I say this to you? There is a prophetic word concerning you. Concerning your family, concerning your destiny, concerning your ministry, concerning your future. There is a prophetic word. There is something you're carrying that is beyond every limitation. Can I say this to you? God has invested so much in you. Don't disappoint him in this generation. 
God has invested so much in you. Don't disappoint him in this generation. God has invested so much in you. There is so much anointing on your life. There is so much treasure on your life. There is so much wisdom on your life. There is so much power in your life. God has invested so much in you. Don't disappoint him. Your best of days are ahead of you. Begin to prepare for the future. Prepare mentally. Prepare emotionally. Prepare yourself uh, spiritually. Begin to prepare yourself. Get ready to invade your generation. Get ready to invade your generation. Begin to prepare yourself. Massive preparation. Get ready. I hear the Lord saying this. Those who prepared those who are prepared will be used in this generation he said in a great house there are many vessels those that approach themselves with vessels unto honor begin to get ready for what god told you a lot of people receive a prophetic word but they don't have the capacity for manifestation they receive a prophetic word but there is no capacity for manifestation but you see when a prophetic word comes to you you gotta begin to prepare for the manifestation of the word there are people watching me right now. You're carrying anointings. You're carrying graces. You're carrying passion. You're carrying power. You're carrying some principles of the kingdom within you that you've cultivated all these years. But begin to expand your capacity. Come on. Go ahead and expand your capacity. You need to do some reading. You need to do some studies. You need to listen to some intelligent people. I don't like listening to people who are not intelligent. Sorry to say this. It's just me. I was a of word. I like listening to intelligent people i like listening to people who set my mind free those who inspire me i can give them anything i can send them offering i can send them more i can do anything for people who inspire me i can do anything for them you know why they are helping me to have a shift they are helping me to cross the boundary line maybe i have saved myself emotionally or spiritually so i am saying this to you you gotta surround yourself with intelligent people people that have dreams people that can inspire you not those that want to envy you and jealous you you don't need jealous folks around you. You need people that can complement your dreams. People that can inspire your destiny. Those that can wake up the giant within you. I came to announce to you. There is a king in you. <laughs> I came to announce to you. There is a queen seated in you. And waiting to be crowned. Can I say this to you? In every opposition. There is a pathway to manifestation of greater things in every opposition. So wake up like a mighty man. It doesn't matter the setbacks you had in the past. Wake up. He said, Oh, mighty man, put on your strength. In Jubal chapter 2, verse 21, a prophetic word came forth. In Jubal 2, 21, he said, Fear ye not, O land, rejoice and be glad, for the Lord will do great things. And this is the days of great things. I feel that anointing. These are the days of great things. These are the days of great possibilities. These are the days to do big things with your life. Don't die small. Don't die like a chicken. I have a, a saying on this group. I say all the time, and my daughter was saying that. Uh, don't die like a chicken. Don't just die. Don't just end your life anywhere. No. Do something big with your life. Have a big dream. Have a big vision. Have an inspiration. Have something that can stretch you to make it different. Don't just live to do a job and pay salary and eat and job. No, no. Think about expanding the kingdom. Think about becoming an inspiration to your generation. Think about becoming a legacy to the next coming generation. Can I say this to you? The history will let any man down who never contributed. I said history will let any man down who never contributed. History will forget those who never invested. History will forget people who never made a difference. I'm here to remind you, there is greatness in you. This is the time to deploy it. Father, I pray for everyone watching me. I pray for them right now that this fire will stay with them. That they will rise and they will do big things with their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Beautiful. This is a very great scope today. I'm happy that you're watching me right now. Now, I encourage you to follow me on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, you just type... 
Click my word on YouTube. You watch one of my videos, my teachings, and you can share it with your friends. You can receive. You can you can better your life with those teachings. They are life changing. They are timeless principles of the kingdom that can bring revolution into your life. And the next thing I want to share with you, there is power in partnership. When you partner with us, it helps me to keep bringing this scope to you every day. Partnership works. This thing you're watching right now was paid for. It was paid for. If you couldn't pay for it, you won't be able to be here. So we encourage you to partner with us. You could do it through PayPal or you could do it through MoneyGram. So today we encourage people to sow into the ground of this ministry. We'd like you to give an offering today into the ground of this ministry to support us to continue bringing this broadcast. You can do it on PayPal. It's faithmanteaching at gmail.com. Faithmanteaching at gmail.com on PayPal. And you can do it through MoneyGram. And today you can say, Apostle, I want to support the tomorrow broadcast. I want to support. It doesn't matter how much it is. It doesn't matter how, they, how little it is or how big it is. We'll go ahead and be a blessing as we continue to change the lives of people all over the world. Thank you. You know, it goes a long way. So be a blessing. Be a blessing. I love you. Looking forward to seeing you on my next broadcast. Now listen. The 30 days of fasting, prayer, and what is going on. So I want you to be effective. I want you to be committed to it. And you will never remain the same. So we encourage you to be part of it. The 90 days of glory is going to come up in the next three to four hours. We'll be right back on this place teaching in the next four hours. Get ready. Something is about to happen to you. Thank you for watching me. Thank you. Thank you for taking out your time, your busy schedule, to be part of my life. Thank you. I'd like you to spread the message. I'd like you to tell people all about the world. Tell them what you're supposed to fit, man. Go listen to him. Tell your pastor. Tell your friends. Tell your colleague. And tell them to watch. Their lives will never remain the same. Looking forward to seeing you on my next broadcast. Remember, there is greatness in you. This is the time to deploy it.